Okay, so our school decided to use Logic of English, an Orton Gillingham based program. I have been doing Orton Gillingham with students for over five years and have noticed when things get a little tricky and when I need to scale back. But I want you to be patient, give it time. Students will get stuck, but switching programs fast and quickly is not often the best solution. We need to give the curriculum a break. When students are working on this or any program, any language arts, seen spell, um, Saxon, it doesn't really matter what language arts program it is, Harcourt, Hoot and Mifflin, their brain is getting rewired and trained, so it takes a while to form new ruts in their brain that are good, so give it time. But also, these things can be really challenging and difficult, so sometimes you need to limit the time that they are spending on task on these difficult tasks. I set up timers all the time and use them to help provide students a break and a relief. For example, I might use a timer and set it for about five minutes, give them one worksheet of words for them to work through. After the five minutes, no matter where they are at, we stop, we move on to a different activity that's a little bit easier for the student. Maybe the student is really good at comprehension, so then we work on a comprehension activity, or we just change the setting. Now they might be working on spelling, and spelling is really tricky, but now they're gonna, after five minutes, work on spelling while sitting on a beanbag or doing something totally different. The second thing I do is I use flashcards with gestures. Now Logic of English comes with flashcards but there are some really cool ones that the school does have that a few students can utilize. For example, uh, TCA has the flashcards from Saxon Phonics and as you can see here, there are three different flashcards for the CH showing the different sounds in a picture. The first one that you can see is taught in lesson 72 is the most common sound, and that's the ch, like in cheese. In 123, they learn the next two sounds, like the k sound in, um, ooh, I don't know, staff. Um, the third sound is ch as in chef. Um, so it's not staff. I can't figure out what that one is. Um, but any, Oh, chord. Hello. A chord because there's three notes. So the student, instead of just having the ch and having to remember all three sounds, there's now a visual that they can use to help them remember. These are in the reading specialist office and there are some smaller cards and some bigger cards and I would really recommend using them. You can show all three at the same time or you can teach one at a time. Another thing that I would do is I would maybe teach a gesture, a hand gesture that the students can do to help them remember each sound for like the ch. -ch. I might have them pretend like they're eating cheese, or for the chord, I might pretend like they're playing a guitar chord. Um, for a chef, I might have them stir something like they're a chef, or they're putting on their chef's hat. Something like that, the students can come up with the gestures, but having that multi-sensory approach is really good. My program really did that. Logic of English doesn't do the hand gestures and the visual flashcards for the separate sounds, but that might be a great option for you to help support students. Although Logic of English and Orton Gillingham in general really helps with spelling, there are a lot of practitioners that have had a lot of training in Orton Gillingham, myself included, that still see students hit a wall in regards to spelling. And the best thing that we have all come across is structured word inquiry. This is where students are analyzing and asking the why, why is it spelled that way, and finding out solutions. Um, especially students that struggle, they do really well with big picture, big concepts, and not the abstract concepts. And so structured word inquiry kind of makes everything concrete and um, presents the big picture. So here's some resources that I love from Structured Word and Quarry. There's some trainings out there. Some I've found are okay, some are great, but here's some good resources. 
Beyond the Word by Lynn Anderson is a great blog. She walks through Structured Word and Query with really young students, first graders. You can see the web address up at the top. But I want to show you this one. She's talking about word webs, looking at related words. So they're analyzing the word jump and talking about all the words that it's related to, like jumper, jumped, jumping. And she walks through it. She does a read aloud. They have a sentence that they're analyzing. I'm just scrolling really fast. You can come back and find this one. But it shows you how you can analyze words and help students understand the spelling and the reasons why for even small words. And then she even talks about the sounds or the reasons why there's a J making the J sound. So I really recommend this website, this blog, Hunt Around. There's so many great website or great um, lessons on here. Another resource that I've utilized a lot is this actual curriculum teaching how the written word works. It walks through the conventions of matrices, word sums, and it teaches students some spelling patterns like when to double, when to drop letters, when to change the word. Y to an I and back again and this is a really great resource as well but it doesn't teach everything but it gets you kind of familiar with some of the basics of structured word and query and it has a lot of great worksheets. Finally Lex Linguistic Educator Exchange this lady is the guru Gina Cook she has a lot of great resources she has webinars one of her resources that I really like is this Grapheme deck. I use this. It has different letter or letter clusters, and it shows the reasons why, like the history, like this came from the Anglo-Saxon word, and in Anglo-Saxons, they actually pronounced both these letters. We kept the history of it. Or the spelling of where, like the location, like where did I put it, is related to here and there. So they keep the related spelling in all of those words. And that's why it's spelled differently than other where. So um, this is a great resource. You don't necessarily have to get it. It's pretty pricey. But it is something that I found useful. Fourth and fifth, these are just two more topics I want to hit on quickly. Um, make up a story with gestures. If you get to a concept that a student is just stuck on, make up a story, um, make characters, give it feelings, and give it a reason that's explaining it. For example, prepositional phrases were tricky for students, so I made up a story about a squirrel running around in my backyard named Preppy and it was changing its position to all the different trees around there. It would go over and under and around and that just kind of helps students remember the word on how to say prep position and it also helped them understand the meaning. Um, so make up a story, use gestures, have like different things that they do with their hands. This really helps kids remember. Also, I highly recommend instead of doing spelling dictations like Logic of English does a lot of spelling dictations. My program did too. But Logic of English has them write in a workbook all the time. That's great and good. It keeps track of how they're doing. But sometimes it's just boring. Have them write with a highlighter on a piece of paper. It's fun. It's colorful. Have them write with a whiteboard marker. It's big. It's fun. It just feels smooth and different. And they feel like a teacher. Uh, students love to write in sand. Have them go out in a sandbox and spell on it. Use chalk on a sidewalk. Um, I love shaving cream on a table. Some kids hate it. 90% of my students absolutely love it and want it every day. It's really messy, but they love it. It makes the room smell great. I just spray a little bit of shaving cream on the table. They spread it out. And wham, they got a piece of paper and they can spell in a fun way. So um, these are great ways to help support Logic of English. It's a great program. I'm already changing some of the ways I teach. Um, to incorporate more games because Logic of English is awesome at incorporating games all the way throughout the program 
to provide practice towards mastery in a fun way. So keep going, stick with it, don't give up. But also I am very aware that this program isn't for everyone. So there are going to be a few students that this just doesn't work with and be willing to change, but give it a couple years. I've seen a student that was stuck for three, four years, and then on the fourth end of the fourth year, they just took off. So give it time.